EnviroVet is a program that we started in 1991. And what we've tried to do is to show the veterinarian that he can use the same approaches in many ways that the wildlife biologist does to bring his expertise to wildlife issues as well. When I'm trying to describe what a veterinarian offers to uh, the community of wildlife biology or ecology, I always use the analogy of biochemistry and medicine. Medicine is studying the patient, the intact animal, but you need to know what's going on with their biochemistry, because that determines everything else. Well, when you have ecologists and wildlife biologists out there, but you don't have veterinarians out there, it's like you're stopping at the level of the whole organism. But you need to go all the way down to the biochemistry as well. Cricket frog was a beautiful species for us to study for a number of reasons. One, it has specific habitat requirements, so you can find it in, in certain types of places. Uh, two, the males call for quite a long time. And we've seen a lot of cricket frogs with intersex gonads. This is where instead of having either two ovaries or two testes, Sometimes you'll have an ovary on one side and a testis on the other, or you'll have an ovotestes. This is a testis with developing oocytes right in it. So what we did is we got Illinois cricket frogs from museums, from the Smithsonian to the Los Angeles Museum to the Field Museum in Chicago and Southern Illinois University and Illinois State Natural History Survey. We got them from all over the place, and they were collected from as far back as 1852. And the idea there was to look at the gonads of these frogs. And we found that intersex appeared very little from 1852 to 1929. But from 1930 to 1942 or so, the number went way up. And from 1946 to 1960 or so, it was way high. Now, you have to ask yourself what chemicals were out there during that time. What we had is the PCBs and some of the other chlorinated chemicals came on the market in the 1930s. And when did we start seeing intersex? In the 1930s. And what happened after World War II? That's when we got into chlorinated pesticides, like DDT. And when did we see the most severe problem of intersex gonads? After DDT was on the market and it was used really heavily. There's strong evidence from field studies, from historic studies, from museum studies, that endocrine disruptors were one of the factors in the decline of the cricket frog. A friend of mine who's an epidemiologist in veterinary medicine, she said, you don't have to understand all the molecular biology and all the molecular immunology of the pig's respiratory system if when you turn up the fans in the hog house, they stop sneezing and coughing. Sometimes you have to do the common sense thing. And yeah, it is complex. There's all this biochemistry, there's all this microbiology, there's all these human activities going on. But if you let the system work, you let it be a natural wild place, it will do what it always did. It will control its own diseases, it will clean itself up.